Hey everyone, this is going to be my final personal thoughts on the Associated Rival truck. This is an eight scale monster truck that Associated came out with, and this is a monster truck, um, 100%. Um, I'll just let you guys know right off the bat that I did and I do still love this truck a lot and I will be keeping it. Um, it is a big, big truck and I'll bring out a couple of other cars to show you a quick size comparisons between the two. But since I've had this truck, I have not broken any parts on it. Um, I did run it hard, but I didn't do any super jumping it 20 feet in the air and letting it come down and breaking parts on it. I like to run my car, but I don't try to bash them too hard. I do got a um, skate park video up. And it doesn't show how hard I really drove the truck, but I did drive the truck um, pretty hard. But um, first off the bat, um, the tires for this were good all-purpose tires. Um, they do have somewhat of a, a hard compound to them, but they were fine. They were fine for all the purposes of this truck. I was only able to traction roll probably maybe once or twice when I was driving on pavement and hitting the corner full speed and just turning. Um, but it's still, it's controllable and it's not ridiculous. Like maybe a 10 scale truck you're running on three S and every time you turn, it flips over all the time. So, um, the only thing I'll go ahead and get this off that has been upgraded on this truck and that I do recommend go ahead and turn this on as well is the shock caps. It does come with some very cheap plastic aluminum shock caps, which I personally um, don't like. They do look kind of cheap and stuff, but these are upgraded ones, and I have not had any problems with these shock caps. These coming loose or breaking, of course, they are aluminum ones. I know people have had problems and issues with the shock towers breaking. It does have this handle here. It probably makes it easier to carry the truck. But this also does protect um, your truck from when you're actually flipping on the top and stuff as well. So um, pretty well built truck. I did not break any of the A-arms or anything on this. I do have a set of RPM ones that um, just in case these do break, I can put those on there. But they are all blue. But um, I haven't broken these. Like I said, I didn't do any super jumping backflips and all that. Um, as far as the power system goes, it is the Reedy 2000 um, 8 scale motor, and it does come with the SC1300 speed controller that's 4S only compatible. And it does use, of course, dual lipos unless you get um, a 4S lipo, but it'd be kind of hard to fit it into this battery case. And I'll get to this also in just a minute. Um, the speed controller is rated at 4S only, so you can't put 5 or 6S on it unless you upgrade the ESC. Um, I have seen other people use this motor on 5 and 6S, but I know when I ran this on 4S, full out all speed with these tires on it, my motor temps were at about 150. So maybe running a 5S on this, one, you could probably get away with it. I think 6S, especially running in a truck of this size, would probably overheat the motor. Um, I did have one problem or issue. If you can see in there, you see those little white screws in there. Those are there, at least for this left side, that did tend to come loose a lot. So I did go ahead and order another set of those. It may just because it's turning and it is. Um, if you guys can see that up in there, those pivot balls. It may tend to come loose somewhat, but that is the only problem that I had. Because when they start to come loose, you get a lot of play. Like even now, it's just a little bit loose. You get a lot of play in this turn wheel. And that's just probably from consistent running on a lot of different terrains and stuff. Now, over to the battery train. Let me actually get some light bulbs so I can show you guys something. Turn this light off real quick. Okay, with the battery tray, um, this is the only thing that I did not like too much about this battery tray. Um, get this in. With this battery tray, get a little light on here. These are two 2S LiPo batteries. They are slightly different in size. This G-Force one is probably about two millimeters um, more in thickness than this Racer's Edge one. The problem that I had was that the Racer's Edge one was fine, but when it came to some of these other LiPos from other companies, you have a hard time, especially if it's cold outside, trying to push these clips down and turn this in. I've seen guys where... They've taken this out, drilled a hole down here, and just used the Velcro strap. But I didn't want to do that. 
one good cheap way to fix this is there are two screws right here and also right here. Just loosen those screws up. If you loosen those screws up or even put longer screws in there, you can see I actually did it right down there. Let's see if I can get this in here and point to it. Um, right in there. It gives you that extra space to level this off so that you can actually push these down and flip these switches over a lot easier. That is a cheap way to go about that. Um, if you have to spend some money, you can spend maybe a dollar and get some longer screws so that this props up a little bit more and it's more even straight across for this battery clip um, to actually go down and fit on it easier because how it is stock out the box, it is kind of a pain to latch both of these down and then to actually pull this down and latch these over. So that is a quick, cheap modification um, for that. Now, as far as tires go, tire compound is good. And like I said, it's good for all purpose running. Um, these blue caps that are around here can come off. That's just for look. So you can unscrew all those and actually have these with black wheels instead of the blue, which just gives you another option for a different look. Um, let me give you guys a quick look at tires. Now, these are Proline trenchers. Um, you see that they're not as tall as the stock ones, but as far as width is concerned, they are wider. But these do have a softer compound, so I did get a little bit more ballooning of the tires with these on. And it did have a little bit of a wider stance. I did not flip it all, even on concrete with these on, even though these are a softer compound. But the suspension setup is good, so as it went into the curves, it would actually have a lot of chassis leaning and rolling and body roll. And it wasn't bad either because it actually looked pretty good. But to show you guys how big the stock tires and wheels are, I have some 8 scale buggy tires and wheels here. Look how big those are. And then I have some truggy tires and wheels here. Huge. So you won't have any problems running this truck anywhere. The speed for me is fine. I know some people were suggesting maybe I maybe put a little bit more speed onto it, which I thought about for a second. But uh, for this thing and the way it is, it was fine for me. It absolutely was. Um, the speed of it was fine. Everything for the truck was fine. I had no complaints whatsoever. I did have one, though, um, the radio. I may have gotten a bad radio, but with the radio that I got, I could only get about 30, 40 feet, and then the truck would just stop. Don't know what the problem was. I had that several times and I was actually frustrated. And after I changed my radio out to a Futaba radio, everything worked fine. So I could have just got a bad radio. Um, the servo in here, um, it is a little bit slow, but I think it's fine for this truck as well. Um, I didn't need a super high speed, high torque servo because the one that comes with it is a metal gear servo. And I think if you start getting a fast servo, you'll start turning a lot quicker and then you may actually start flipping a lot more. But um, you could upgrade the servo if you want. But for me, it was fine like it was. If I wanted to make a sharp turn while I was actually driving it, I just hit the brakes a little bit and I could actually dig more into the turns and corners and stuff. So um, that is my, like I said, my personal final thoughts on the associated rival truck. Um, got to excuse my mess in here. I got batteries charging and everything else. And oh, let me show you guys a quick comparison real quick. So here it is compared to my Stampede 4x4. Um, this thing just towers over it. This video is probably not going to do it justice at all. But it's literally, as you can see, twice the size um, as the Stampede 4x4. And it is bigger than an Emax and a T-Max. And even almost the Savage. I think the Savage may be a little bit longer. I have to get a video comparison of those two. Um, but you just see how big this truck is and also the ground clearance on it, you know, compared to, of course, a 10 scale truck. But I do have my stampede a little bit um, lower. See the tire difference. These are trenchers on here. So size differences with this truck. I actually got my trophy truggy here. You see the differences in those. Of course, this is a truck and does have low profile tires and wheels. But even with some truggy tires and wheels. The rival, of course, it being a monster truck is going to be a lot bigger. So um, stay tuned for probably one more or two videos of this. I do have a track running video and a bashing video 
And I'll probably take this thing out in some mud because we're going to get some rain pretty soon as well. So don't forget to like and or dislike this video. And you have not subscribed, subscribe and put any comments below and I'll try to get back to them. Thanks.